Hello again, biologist. Mr. Kinnear here with another video lesson for National 5 Biology. We're in Unit 3, Life on Earth. And today our lesson is about mutations, variation and adaptation. So this is the first half of key area 3.6, which is evolution of the species. So mutations, variation, adaptation, those are three words you'll have heard before. So before we go on to that, I just want to have a quick recap on key area 1.3. Because if we're going to learn about mutations, we need to make sure we understand where those mutations could happen. And therefore, we're going to look back at DNA. And what we need to remember from key area 1.3 is that three bases on the DNA strand code, hopefully you're saying to me, for an amino acid. These join to make a protein molecule. So the order of the DNA bases is code for the order of amino acids in the protein. And some key vocabulary from that area, a gene is a section of DNA that codes for one protein, so one characteristic. And there's slight differences in the structure of the gene, so slight difference in the sequence of bases on the DNA, because it's different proteins and therefore different characteristics. For example, blue eyes and brown eyes, as you can see there, the sequence of amino acids is slightly different in the two eye colours, but the iris itself still does the same job in both of those people. So those slightly different versions of the genes are called alleles. And we inherit two versions of a gene, one allele from each parent. That may be the same allele, it may be a different one. And it's a mutation that changes the DNA to make those different alleles. So mutations have been involved in our evolution over the course of millions of years. To give you a definition of the word mutation, it's a change in the structure or amount of an organism's genetic material. And that will then change or potentially change the phenotype or the characteristics of an organism. And we came across that word phenotype, key area 2.4, variation and inheritance. So phenotype, the pH being for physical appearance. So examples of phenotype, things you can see, are eye colour, hair colour. We talked about brown fur and white fur on mice. So those are examples of phenotypes of things you can actually see. Mutations are the only source of new alleles. So they add changes into our genome and therefore potential for evolution. Mutations occur at random and don't happen very frequently. So you can't set your watch by them. And they can also then be uh, classed as neutral, advantageous, or disadvantageous. Neutral mutations show no visible change to the organism. They're often referred to as silent mutations because you can't pick them out. No change to the phenotype, so you wouldn't be able to say, well, that's had its DNA changed by mutation. Advantageous, as its name suggests, it provides a benefit to the survival or reproduction of the organism, whether it's stronger or able to reach for more food, say, for instance, the long neck of a giraffe, that allows it to get food from the top of the tree rather than compete with other animals that are eating grass from the ground. Disadvantageous, again as its name suggests, it harms or prevents the survival or reproduction of the organism. So those genes then are not passed on because they harm the chances of this getting to sexual maturity or reproducing. As I said earlier, mutations happen randomly and rather infrequently. There are some conditions that would make mutations happen more readily. Mutagens is the name of anything which can cause a mutation or increase how often mutations occur. And again, if you're familiar with like sci-fi or cartoons or comics, you will probably be familiar with some of these. So radiation, such as X-rays, UV light and gamma rays. So if you've been and got an X-ray for a broken arm or even in the dentist, you'll know that the people administering the X-rays do protect themselves from the X-rays. You getting one or two X-rays in a dentist, not a problem. But somebody there doing a multitude of X-rays in one day, that could cause them problems. UV light, again, you may be familiar with things like skin cancer. Um, obviously, that is impacted by the amount of UV light. And again, if you do like your comic books, then gamma rays, which obviously caused the change from Bruce Banner into Incredible Hulk. K 
chemicals like mustard gas and benzene. I think mustard gas was used in um, kind of early World War One, World War Two. Uh, benzene, a mutagen, and actually you can find it um, quite readily in cigarettes. You must got really high temperatures, so all of these things can cause mutations to happen more readily. If mutations occur during the formation of sex cells, then they can be passed on to the next generation. That's one of the reasons why people protect themselves when they're administering x-rays, particularly females. Females are born with all the eggs they'll ever carry, so they need to protect themselves from x-rays and any other mutagens, because that can obviously cause damage and mutations to their eggs, which therefore would cause problems uh, for their offspring. If mutations occur during the copying of normal body cells for growth or repair, that might then cause cancer. So again, there's an example of a skin cancer that may have been caused by something like a mutagen of UV light, but that can't be passed on to children. As I said, mutations are responsible for bringing in new alleles, new versions of genes into the genome of any organism. That can also happen through sexual reproduction, which provides a bit of variety because within a species there is usually a great deal of variation between individuals so different looks whether it's humans snails or moths all of these individuals from the same species but slightly different look to them so that comes from the slightly different mix of dna within their cells the variety that we have within the human population or within our classroom makes no real difference on our survivability. So our skin colour, our eye colour, our hair colour. It doesn't give us a better or worse chance of just surviving. It makes us unique and wonderful and individual, but it doesn't change our survivability rates. Obviously, that's not the same in other populations. So for instance, these banded snails, a species of snails that live on the ground in woodland, you may have seen them in your gardens. Okay, in autumn, they'll live on leaves on the ground and they'll be brown. So hopefully you might start to see immediately that that might impact on their survival rates. So there's one that stands out to me right away. If I was a bird going to eat a snail, then there's a yellow one right in the middle that stands out a mile. The other ones might be a bit more camouflaged and therefore less likely to be picked off. That then means that this yellow snail is less likely to survive less likely to reproduce and less likely to pass its genes on to the next population whereas the brown snails are less likely to be picked off and therefore more likely to get to reproduction age and more likely to pass on their genes to the next generation and therefore you get more brown snails so that is then how organisms over the course of time become adapted to their surroundings and more suited and adapted to survival and over the course of time, millennia, if not millions of years, we end up with organisms that are incredibly well adapted to the conditions in which they live. A great example of that would be a polar bear. You should know that polar bears live in the Arctic Circle. They hunt seals for food. They're incredible predators. Adaptations that they have include white appearance. So that's a camouflage from their prey on the snow and ice. They have thick layers of fat and fur for insulation against the cold and they have that small surface to volume ratio to minimise heat loss. And the greasy coat also helps with that, it sheds water after swimming. And they have large feet to distribute their loads and increase their grip on ice, which allows them to creep up on unsuspecting seals. Now that's fantastic. They are well suited to the conditions in which they live, but unfortunately, Man's activity is changing those conditions, and it's changing those conditions incredibly rapidly, far faster than the organisms there can adapt to those changes. So the snow and ice are disappearing. So it can't camouflage itself as well. The ice is getting further and further apart as it melts, and therefore creeping up on seals is a lot more difficult. So we're finding that across the Arctic, various other parts of the world where human activity is changing the conditions in the environment far faster than these incredibly well adapted organisms can.
can change. And that's something that humankind need to look at. And that brings us to the end of today's video lesson. So today we've looked at mutations. Those are spontaneous changes to DNA code. And that could be advantageous, neutral, or disadvantageous. We've also looked at variation. And every species displays elements of variation. And that comes from mutations and or sexual reproduction. Also adaptation, which means that organisms are incredibly well suited to the environments or conditions in which they live. So hopefully you found that useful. As always, if you have any problems, questions or queries, give me a shout and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.